The tomatoes that we set out in our walls of water have made it through several hard frosts and they've grown quite large. They're looking really good. It's warm enough now that we could uh, fill the wall all the way up so that it stands open. And if it doesn't stand open on its own, go ahead and use a stick to prop open the wall. Um, and this will just let the tomato plant grow out through the top. It's getting quite large. You can see it's almost reached the top here. We already have a few flowers on it, so those fruits will be ready before too long. Well, today I'm going to plant out the remainder of our tomatoes, and we have a couple of different cultivars that we're growing. We have a, a um, cherry tomato called Riesen Stube, and that means it's German and it means a big bunch of grapes. So this cultivar produces huge, oh, clusters of wonderful, delicious cherry tomatoes. I'm looking forward to those for sure. We also have a plant called Orange Fleshed Purple Smudge. It has a really unique coloration and um, you'll have to look for those purple speckled tomatoes later this season. Now these are both indeterminate types of tomatoes, which means they set their fruit throughout the growing season. Most of our heirloom tomatoes are indeterminate types. Uh, there's another type of tomato which is called determinate, and determinate tomatoes produce their fruit all at once. And these were bred largely for uh, commercial production so that um, growers could come in and harvest all their fruit. But they're also very useful in the home garden if you're going to be canning. And that way you can have your fruit all, all um, mature at the same time and you could collect it and process it all at once. So when you're looking for tomatoes to grow, you, you don't want really huge, large tomatoes. Um, you want to look for something that's about six to eight inches tall and has a nice thick stem like this. So don't be fooled in the garden center by trying to find the largest uh, tomato plants you can. Um, you want to avoid real thin spindly stems as well. And if you are started your tomato plants from seed, usually they're ready to plant out after about six to eight weeks. The number of plants that you need is going to depend on your intended use. Uh, for fresh use, an average of five plants per family member is usually quite enough. And if you're going to freeze or process them, um, five to ten plants is recommended. Before we set our plants in the ground, we want to get our stakes set out. And there's many ways of staking tomatoes. And the reason we do it is that they grow so large, they tend to fall over. Um, there's greater disease problems when the leaves are touching the ground or the fruits are on the ground. So it's a good idea to get them up off the ground. And one way to do that is to use wooden stakes that will drive into the ground. And when you use those, you need to tie the plants onto the stakes to support them. You can also use tomato cages that you find at the garden center. And we found, uh, these are really fun, we found these spiral stakes. And as the plant grows, you just train it around the spirals of, of the stake. And they come in green, but we decided to paint them fun colors so that they stand out in the garden. Our tomatoes are set two feet apart in our uh, bed row system, and they're actually planted on two foot squares. So they're gonna be two feet apart, um, both across the bed and down the length of the bed. And so I'm just using, uh, a measure to find two feet and I'm going to stick these down to the to the first spiral. And it's a good idea to set your stakes out before you plant, especially if you're using a large wooden stake so that you don't damage the root system driving the stake into the ground. Well I'm ready to set my tomatoes out and tomato plants are actually put in the ground fairly deep. Um, they don't like to dry out, and so we want to establish as, as extensive of a root system as possible. And so what we do is we remove the lower set of leaves, and on a larger plant such as this, you can remove several leaves. I'm going to go ahead and remove it all the way, all the way up to this one. And when I plant this, I'm going to set it in the ground this deep. Um, so I'm going to prepare my hole next to my stake. And because I'm setting it in very deep, I need a nice deep hole. Luckily I have uh, some good loose soil, makes the digging easy. 
and it might take you a couple tries to get the right height, but I want to set that deep enough so that this first leaf, the, the one that I've left, is at ground level, and that looks pretty good. I go ahead and gently tamp the soil back um, around the plant, and as the plant grows, I'm just going to train it up along this stem here. Sometimes when we go to look for plants, all we find are um, really long leggy plants and sometimes even if you grow your own and you don't have enough light or maybe you've given the plants a little too much nitrogen, they produce a really long thin stem and this one isn't even quite as leggy as I had hoped for demonstration purposes, um, but it is a bit large. And with these, you don't want to plant them quite the same way. If they have too thin of a stem, they're just going to be weak. But there's a different trenching method that we can use to get these plants established well. And so what you want to do is dig a, about a four inch deep trench next to your stake. And we're going to plant our tomato in that trench. And um, that's about four inches and all the buried portion of the stem is going to produce roots on it just like we pulled off the lower leaves of the other plant um, we're going to do the same thing here and we want to plant it so that the top six inches is above ground um, so all this part is going to be buried and over time roots are going to grow on here so it's going to give our tomato plant a really nice start and I'm going to push a little soil under the top to give it a sort of a bed to rest on. And we're just going to gently tilt the stem upward. I'm going to go ahead and pull that leaf off so that it's not buried. We're going to gently tilt the stem upward so that our plant grows upright. And if you need to pack a little extra soil on the back side to give it support, that'll help hold it. And now our stem is going to develop um, a thicker base and it's going to be stronger. It's going to have a really nice root system to get it started well. Once your tomatoes are planted, you want to water them in well. Water is very important with tomatoes. Uh, they, they do not tolerate um, alternating periods of wet and dry, especially once they start to set fruit. When we, water, when we uh, let them dry out, the fruit cracks. And uh, a lot of times if you have a heavy rain in the summer when the fruit's coming on, you see that if you let the soil dry out. So we want to take measures to keep our soil moist and one way to do that is to use some mulch. And I'm going to start with a nice dark mulch. Um, I'm using a compost. This is a mushroom compost. And I'm going to start with something dark right now to help keep the soil warm. Tomatoes really like it hot. So the, the dark mulch will keep the plants warmer early in the spring until it starts to get hot. Once it warms up, I'm going to switch and cover the, the compost with some straw and that'll help uh, have more of a cooling effect on the soil. But really the most important thing is just to keep the soil evenly wet so that our uh, root system has a constant supply of moisture. It's also a good idea to set your plants out either in the evening or um, on a cloudy day so that they don't wilt right after you plant them. You can find more information on growing tomatoes in fact sheet HLA 6012, Growing Tomatoes in the Home Garden.